Well, President Biden has approved a disaster declaration for Kentucky. He's ordering federal resources to go toward helping people who lost everything. He will also direct the EPA to investigate the part that climate change may have played in fueling these storms. So I want to bring in Victor Gensini. He's an associate professor who teaches meteorology at uh, Northern Illinois University, and he's a research, his research focuses on extreme weather and climate change. Okay, great. I'm so happy that you are here because, you know, we've talked a lot this morning about how rare it is to have these sort of tornadoes in December. I feel like quite often we are talking about record-breaking storms or the rarity of something occurring. Is there any way to know whether or not climate change had a hand in what we saw happen over the weekend in so many states? Well, yes and no. First of all, the United States averages about 1,500 tornadoes per year, 25 of those being in December. Of course, the events of Friday are historic, legendary, generational, pick your, your favorite adjective, but you have to really go back to March 18th, 1925, the tri-state tornado that unfortunately killed 695 people to find anything even remotely close to what happened on Friday evening. That tornado had a path length 219 miles. We will see what the final statistics are for this tornado. I expect it to be rated EF4 or EF5 on the Fujita scale with a path length of very close to potentially 250 miles, really making this the most historic tornado event in history. So then uh, the question that I would have, uh, Victor, is right. about the power of this storm. You mentioned the one from the 1920s. Was that storm so devastating because homes were not as sturdy as they are today? Uh, or was it that this tornado, these tornadoes that touched down across all these states, was that much more powerful? Uh, and, has, and those events have grown um, in power, you know, over the course of the last 100 years. Yeah, great question. I mean, think of the State of the Union in 1925. I mean, we've come so far in terms of our ability to warn, detect, and alert people for these sort of tornadoes. So we're very lucky in many senses that the numbers, I think here, when it's all said and done of casualties, will be much lower than something like the tri-state tornado. This will be the quad-state tornado, by the way, crossing four states. Now, getting back quickly to the climate change issue, I really akin this to the Major League Baseball era during steroids, where we really couldn't tell if one, one home run was due to steroids. We can't tell right now. We don't have the attribution science necessary to say with some degree of certainty that last uh, Friday evening's tornadoes were, were uh, a component of climate change. But what we can say is when you start to look at the aggregate, the batting averages, the number of home runs per season, that these tornadoes are sort of uh, changing in not only where they occur, right, getting a little bit further eastward, uh, but it, it changing in their intensity. So, you know, the intensity is one thing, but the location is another. Kentucky is outside of Tornado Alley, but we have been seeing tornadoes popping up outside of Tornado Alley. Perhaps Tornado Alley is moving or widening or something. Um, but, you know, can you talk a little bit about this, this shift, I guess? Yeah, I really don't like the use of Tornado Alley because I think it sort of leads people mm. to believe that tornadoes only happen in a certain area of the country and tornadoes can happen in all 50 states. And I think what we've been seeing over the last 40 years, if you look at research by our group at, at Northern Illinois and others, we've seen a, a shift really, a decrease in the frequency in the Great Plains, which still gets a lot of tornadoes, but an increasing trend in places like Kentucky and Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, and portions of the Midwest. And this is obviously a big deal for vulnerability. You see what happens when tornadoes traverse the landscape and hit structures, especially weak structures. That area of the Mid-South has a very unique vulnerability, a significant amount of weak frame housing stock, and the socioeconomic factors, quite frankly, that, that Nora was just highlighting in her piece. Uh, so what does it tell you then that Kentucky experienced a devastating tornado in December? I mean, you, I know you gave us some statistics about the number of tornadoes that can occur. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it, it is rare, but it does happen. Um, but what's going on this season? Well, I think when many people woke up on Friday, uh, they were probably saying, what is this spring-like air mass that I'm experiencing, especially if you woke up in a place like Memphis that hit their record high, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, high temperature for the day. The air mass on Friday was just very prime, very ripe 
for severe storms, including tornadoes. And I, it was really sort of a Goldilocks of a setup. We had a very powerful jet stream that was intersecting and overlapping with that humid air mass. And, and the result of that was a very long trap supercell rotating thunderstorm that produced, again, this potentially violent tornado across four states. And I think, you know, when you start to look at those high temperatures and the ingredients that were present, very, very rare for December, uh, which again, has a lot of us still trying, I think, to unpack the role of climate change. I think President Biden said it very well on Saturday. We can't attribute one event, but when we start to look at the aggregate of all of these events, the picture of the result of the impacts of climate change on these sort of extreme events becomes pretty clear. So I want you to sort of separate uh, kind of the, fac the, the facts from the feelings. And it certainly feels yeah. like when we cover these um, that uh, tornadoes are getting more intense, that, there are, that the impact is more devastating, that maybe there are more of them. But I, but I don't know is that if that's true or not. What does the data and the numbers really show in terms of the impact of tornadoes over the past, let's say, 10 years? The number of significant tornadoes through time is steady, has not changed at all. So we cannot mm. say that we've seen an increase in the number of tornado events like what we saw Friday through time. Um, in fact, if anything, it's been a, a little bit of a decrease through time. What we can say is where they're happening is changing. You showed that great map from our research earlier that, that sort of shows the, the highlighting the increase in the risk of tornadoes happening across the Mid-South. I think the big thing is the component of exposure and vulnerability that my colleagues at Northern Illinois University and, and Villanova University, Stephen Strader and Walker Ashley specifically, are looking at this issue of exposure and vulnerability. In other words, our cities continue to grow larger. We have a larger human footprint on the surface of the earth. And we know for sure that as we go forward through the next 50, 100 years, we're gonna have more of these tornado disasters independent of climate change. We will continue to see these because our cities are growing larger. And quite frankly, we have a lot of vulnerability, especially in that, uh, the areas that, that we're highlighting here in the Mid-South. And so finally, I guess, uh, are you concerned uh, about what the future portends? You know, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm worried about the climate issue. I think we all should be. I'm also worried about this exposure and vulnerability. We do have a very big problem with things like mobile homes, with large warehouses that potentially don't have, uh, you know, safe shelters. I, I, I feel for everybody in this particular event, especially those at the candle factory. Um, I, you know, I think there's a lot of questions to be answered, asked and, and tried to answer in regards to severe weather safety plans and really building a weather ready nation, because this is not the last tornado disaster we will see. We see these. I mean, we're dealing one with Nashville right last year around this time before Christmas. I we will continue to see these. And I, I, I feel like unless we, we really begin to address the structure that you're in uh, when these tornado events occur, I think we're going to be having a lot more of these discussions, unfortunately. Victor Gensini, thank you very much.